Now, as some of you may know, I do enjoy a bit of the old Linux. And I also enjoy... My Grape iMac G3. Which is why today... I want to revisit this guy. This is my first generation iMac G3 Revision D from 1999, and it has a 333 megahertz G3, uh, so the fastest version of the original iMac. And I've upgraded it just a bit. In a previous video, you saw me put an SSD in here. Uh, I also tried to upgrade to 512 megs of RAM, but unfortunately, uh, one of the RAM slots in here appears to be broken, so it only took 256 megs. Uh, which I hope isn't a problem for what I'd like us to do today, which is see if we can install a modern Linux on this thing. So Adelie Linux is a really interesting little Linux distribution that I only found because I was looking for a distro that did 32-bit power PC, uh, which of course, this is 32-bit power PC. Um, Debian used to do it, but they stopped on Debian 8 Jesse, which shipped with the now ancient version of the kernel 3.16. But this distribution, they just released their release candidate 1.0, which brings Linux kernel 5 as in 5.3, to PowerPC. So I could theoretically get pretty much the latest kernel running on this 21-year-old iMac. And Adelie is named after a type of penguin, a small little adorable Antarctic penguin, which makes sense because this distribution is a small little Adorable Linux distribution for small, adorable computers like this iMac. Now, of course, it runs on modern computers too, but we don't like modern computers here. So today, I want to try to install Adelie Linux on this thing. But first, I finally got in the correct PRAM batteries. So we're going to put in a new PRAM battery super fast and I also want to take out the uh, SSD from here because I like how it's set up and we're going to put back the original IDE spinning hard drive 4400 RPM hard drive uh, so this will be just like it was if we were installing Linux from the future on the original machine all right let's go <music> So installing Adelie is a little bit of a manual process, but if you've ever seen how Arch Linux is installed, uh, this will be old hat to you. But even if you've never done any advanced Linux install, uh, it's really not that difficult and it doesn't take a lot of time. And the Adelie wiki has pretty straightforward step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, and there's just a, a couple of caveats when you're installing it on this old power PC, but we'll go over those. Uh, it's helpful to have three tabs open when you're doing this install. I've got the Adelie Linux how to manually install guide. I have the Adelie page on Grub2. And then I also have the Arch Linux wiki install guide just open to the section about partitioning with FDisk uh, because that's handy to have open because we are going to have to do that. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is start this up and hold down C to boot from the CD, which is the Adelie Beta 4 full install CD. Okay, so once we get to Grub, we're going to go in the first option, which is the Adelie Linux live environment where we can perform our install.
And then once we're at the login screen, we just type root to log in as root, which will let us do our install. Uh, so first let's connect to the internet. Now I've plugged my ethernet cable in around the side. And if we type if config a, we can see that is F zero. So then we can do DHCPCD F zero to automatically connect to my router through the power of DHCP. And then once that's finished, we can do a quick ping of the google.com mothership and just verify that we're connected. And we are. And now we can get into the business of the actual install. So the first thing we'll do is actually uh, unique to uh, the PowerPC Mac. Uh, and this is where you might get thrown if you're just following the instructions. But we're going to have to partition the disk. And we have to do uh, a little bit of a special partition in that in order for these new world ROM Macs to boot, they need to have a boot partition with a special label. Uh, and then the rest of the disk can be extended forward just for Linux. So this is where it's helpful to have the ArchWiki open to the part about partitioning. And they use FDisk, but we're actually going to use something called Mac FDisk. Now, first let's do LSBLK. And we can see SDA is my six gig drive. And then we can do Mac FDisk dev SDA. And this will open up Mac FDisk. And if we type lowercase p in the command prompt, it will print out the current partition map. So we've got a lot of Mac stuff here. Um, and we can really just uh, get rid of this stuff. So Mac FDisk is a little bit annoying about these driver partitions, but that doesn't really matter here. Um, so we're going to delete all these other partitions. So we're going to delete four through eight. So just D4, D5, D6, D7, and D8. And now when we print, uh, looks like we missed some. Okay, let's D5. And now we have just these two driver partitions of a couple kilobytes each, and then all the rest is free space. So now we're gonna make two partitions. The first one is going to be the boot partition. Uh, and this is specific to these Macs, uh, but we have to create it with a special label uh, or description. So we'll do a capital C, which is the create command with extra options. And in the first block, we're going to put this at the beginning of SDA4. So we can just type 4P. And then we want it to be 100 megs, so 100M. Name of partition, we're just going to call it boot. And then type of partition, uh, this has to be exactly Apple underscore bootstrap with a capital A and a capital B. So Apple underscore bootstrap. And now when we P to print the partition map, we can see it's automatically uh, detected that as a new world boot block. So we've got 100 megabytes of a type Apple bootstrap that's automatically detected new world boot block. So now we can do a lowercase c, and we're just going to create a partition with the rest of SDA5. Uh, so we'll do 5p, and then lengthen blocks, but we'll just do 5p again to use the whole thing. Uh, and this will be our main partition. So let's call that grapes because that's what I call this computer. And now when we print, uh, we can see the full final partition map. SDA4 is the Apple bootstrap. SDA5 is our, just the rest of the space that's going to be extended for formatted. Uh, and we'll just have to remember number four, that's going to come in handy later. So now we can do W to write the partitions. And then Q to quit out of here. 
And now if we do LSBLK, we can see our new partition map with SDA 400 megs, SDA 5, the rest of the disk 5.9 gigs. Next thing we have to do is format these. Uh, the first one has to be formatted in HFS. So we can do mkfs dot HFS plus dev SDA four for the bootstrap partition. And that'll format it as an HFS plus volume. And then we can do mkfs dot ext four to dev SDA five. And that'll format our rest of the disk partition as extended fo extended for just the regular uh, modern Linux file system. Now we can get into the actual install. So first we're going to mount our SDA five partition to slash target. So mount dev SDA five to slash target. And that'll let us copy stuff over to the target, uh, to our partition, which is now just targeted by the word target. And then we, uh, we're going to make dir target slash boot. And then we're going to mount dev SDA four, which is that new world hundred meg boot block to target slash boot. And the package manager on Adelie Linux is APK, so we're gonna configure that next. Make directory dash P target, etc. APK. And then CP dash R, etc. APK keys to target, etc. APK. And now we're going to APK with the root set to our target mount. We're going to do init DB for the add command. And now we can set up the sources for the repositories. So we can CP, ETC, APK, repositories to target, etc., APK. And now APK with the root of target, update. And now we're connected to the magic of the internet, downloading our repositories. And now we're ready to actually install. So APK with the root of target add Adley base bash bin sh and SSMTP. And we'll let that install. All right, next up we install OpenRC for the init system. So APK with the root of target, add OpenRC and sysv init. And then cp prr target user share OpenRC run levels to target, etc. And now we just create a couple uh, additional files here. So cp p, etc. shells to target, etc. cp p, etc. resolve.conf to target, etc. Uh, we don't need an fstab. Uh, which is in the instructions, so we'll skip that. And now we get to install the kernel. So apk with the root of target add easy kernel and easy kernel modules. Next up, we need to give this computer a unique and memorable host name. 
So we'll do echo grapes to target, etc. host name. Now let's add some networking. So APK with the root of target. We're going to add net IFRC, net IFRC doc, and DHCP CD because that comes in handy. And then we're not going to install any wireless stuff because this Mac is so old it has no idea what Wi Fi is. Uh, so we're ready to actually ch root into our new installation and finish configuring it. So we can do mount dash b dev to target dev, mount dash t proc none to target proc, mount dash t sysfs none to target sys and ch root into target. And we can see our prompt is changed from the tilde to a slash. We are actually inside of our new Adelie Linux install on the hard drive. So first thing, let's just change our root password to something, whoops, just typoed. Change it to something nice and memorable here. And then let's create a new user and then change that user's password to something nice and memorable and make a home directory for that user because we shouldn't always be in root that's not very secure now let's uh, configure networking to be nice and automatic so ln-s etc init.d net.low to etc init.d s0 and that's just creating a link from the one to the other and then rc update add net.s0 to default well I typed something wrong here whoops I need to do link dash s or ln dash s, etc. init d net dot low to etc. init d net dot f zero. And then I can do my RC update to add net dot f zero to the default run level. And then RC update add udev to the boot run level. And then RC update add udev trigger to boot run level. And then let's add a open SSH, open SSH because it's pretty fun to SSH into an ancient machine and control my iMac from my couch. Would help if I typed it right. And then RC update add sshd to default. Now we need to install the bootloader. And this can be a little bit confusing. It kind of threw me at first, uh, but it's really not that difficult. So if you're following along, switch over to uh, the wiki Adelie Linux page for the grub2 package. And we're going to be following the power PC instruction. So don't follow the first set, which is x86 BIOS. Scroll down until you see power PC. And we're going to APK add grub and grub IEEE -E -E 1275. And now don't worry about this error here. Uh, we're going to do make dir p boot grub. Uh, we're not going to mount uh, dev boot uh, or boot partition because that's already mounted. So we're just going to do grub 
make config dash o boot grub grub dot cfg. And it's found our Linux image auto magically and it's done. Now we're going to do grub install boot slash grub. And then we can ignore the error about it not being a prep partition. And then we're going to do grub mac bless boot slash grub slash grub. And mac bless just gives it uh, like a flag on that partition so that the iMac knows it's okay to boot from it. Uh, next, we need to install the curl package or CURL. So apk add CURL. And then we're going to download a very helpfully provided of boot.b, open firmware boot, so of boot.b, from the Adelie Linux dist files. So curl o to boot grub of boot.b, this URL. So https dist files .org slash source slash grub hyphen of boot dot b. There we go. So if you followed along on the instructions on uh, the Adelie Linux wiki, we're now at the step where it says this should allow you to boot from disk, but there's actually one more weird thing we have to do. Um, so we should be all installed successfully. So we'll type exit to get out of our ch root and then reboot now. And then we're going to need to reboot into open firmware. So we're going to hold down Apple option O and F as soon as it restarts to get into the open firmware mode. And this is where we need to remember our boot partition number that we made earlier, which in our case was partition four, SDA four. That's that 100 meg boot partition. And we just need to tell open firmware to boot from it. So in open firmware here, we're going to do set env boot hyphen device hd colon four comma backslash grub backslash grub and then hit enter. I'm going to pull our CD out just to make sure we don't accidentally boot from that. And then I'm going to type reboot. Restart. I'm going to turn it off <laughs> and turn it back on. And now if we're very lucky, we should see welcome to grub. And there we go. We have successfully installed Adelie Linux, even with its couple extra quirks onto this ancient 1999 iMac. So we have a pretty modern Linux on our 1999 iMac. And that's pretty exciting. So we'll go ahead, boot into Adelie Linux. And then I'll let you know uh, just kind of the one, one extra problem that I can't solve and maybe somebody can help me in the comments below. So we've automatically connected to DHCP to the router, so it's already online. Now, this is like a little bit slow updating up here, so you can see it actually put our login up here and then continued to print out other stuff as it went. So we're just gonna go ahead and log in as root here. And there we go. And we can do 
APK at H top because that's essential. And let's see how much of our single core of 333 megahertz power PC G3 we're using. We're only using 2.6% of it and we're only using 12 megs of RAM. So this computer, old as it is, uh, just running terminal mode modern Linux, you know, it's it doesn't use a lot of resources. 12 megs of RAM. I mean, that's crazy. What are we doing with, you know, 16 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM? Here I am running a full computer online with 12 megs of RAM. And then if I need to do something more powerful... Well, I can SSH into my main machine. Whoops. So my main machine is at 10.0.0.16, which is running Ubuntu uh, with 64 gigs of RAM on my 12 core i7. Or 12 thread, uh, six core, 12 thread, yeah. So that's using 2.67 gigs of RAM right now with Dropbox and Apache and all sorts of stuff running. Um, but we don't need that stuff. Single core and 12 megs of RAM is more than enough. Now, uh, there are a couple problems with uh, Adelie Linux, at least that I wasn't able to solve. Well, there's one real one, and that is I, I still can't figure out how to get X Windows to boot. So uh, APK add XORG server um, and I need to add XORG drivers, but I think it's a driver problem. So I know what the video card in here is and the driver is there, but for whatever reason, it just won't create the screen. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let's do apk add xor drivers. And then if we do apk add PCI utils, oops, apk add PCI utils. Now we can do ls PCI and we can see our video card. So at PCI bus uh, position 12 or the address of 12, uh, it's an ATI 3D Rage Pro PCI. And the driver is in there and it should work. Well, let's do apk add xfce desktop. Oops, apk add xfce desktop and then we'll try to start it. So now if we do start X, it tries, but it fails. So we've got server terminated with error. And then we've got unable to connect to X server, connection refused. And if we just try to do like X org, 
we get a little bit more information. So add screen, screen in it failed for driver zero. I've tried to do a lot of stuff. XOR configure and R128 and Mach 64 are the two drivers and it should be Mach 64. That's the driver for this video card and it's there. Um, so if I do X config root xorg.conf.new, which is the new um, xorg.conf that xconfig generated. Now it even gives me a different error. It says no screens found. And I've tried to edit uh, xorg.conf.new. And I've tried to change up like the driver in here. You know, right now it says driver mode setting. So if I change it to driver Mach 64, I think that's what you're supposed to do. And this has the bus ID PCI 18, but I think it's on 12. So I've tried that. And now if we try to boot from it again, still failed, no screens found. Uh, I've tried to do a couple kernel parameters on here. I've uh, blacklisted the um, open firmware frame buffer uh, to try to get, make it use like the frame buffers that are in software here, um, which actually changed the resolution a bit. I thought it looked promising, but again, uh, failed in exactly the same way. So I'm still trying to figure out how to get X to work. And if you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments below i'd be very appreciative uh but thank you very much for watching this video i hope this inspires you to install modern linux on your ancient macintosh um if you like this video i'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, if you'd like to see more stuff like this extreme amateur vintage computering uh, please subscribe and i will See you in the next video. Thanks.